Hey guys, Leon Sylvester here. Welcome back to the channel. In this video today, we're going to be looking at the stop drinking timeline. I'm going to talk you through the entire process of from literally like being born and starting to go through the conditioning and all of that nonsense to having your first drink to realizing you've got a bit of a problem to starting to look for a solution and then to actually finding a solution that works. I'm going to talk you through that entire process. So this video is going to be one that you're going to want to start at the beginning. You're going to watch, want to watch to the very end because this timeline is critical to understand. And in fact, I'm not just saying this, but if there was one video that you had to watch on this channel in full, it's got to be this one because you're going to learn so much about what's been going on throughout this whole process of your life of drinking alcohol because it's insane. And I'll come to this stuff at the end. At the end of the video, I'm basically going to explain how you can actually work with me one on one to go through the first principle system, the step by step system that makes stopping drinking so enjoyable, so effortless, so simple. So I'll talk to you about that at the end of the video. But for now, let's jump straight into the stop drinking timeline video. So the way that I'm kind of going to like talk about this stuff is I'm going to share my experience with you and that, like the process that I went through because, you know, this stuff is it's it's everybody kind of goes through the same thing, right? If you're in a position that I was in where I was desperate for a solution to my problem, where I tried AA, I tried willpower, I tried all this stuff, it's very likely that we've almost taken identical steps in our life. Sure, there's going to be discrepancies, there's going to be few, a few nuances and, you know, maybe ages are different and whatever, but at the end of the day, we all kind of start here and end up here and we want to get back here. And so whilst, you know, I might talk about my 20s, that might be your 30s or your 40s, it doesn't really make a difference. So just try to keep like open-minded, try to kind of take the value from this video, try not to get caught up on too much of the, of the tiny details, but let's get into this. So, right, before all of this happened, before we get into the stop drinking timeline, we have to talk about this bit here, right? What happened before this moment, right? So that's my first drink. My first drink. So what on earth had been happening up until this point? Well, this is kind of what I want to explain, right? Because this, if you can understand this, if you understand this concept, you are miles ahead of every other person that is looking for a solution to their drinking problem. Because it's, this is the problem, right? It's not, this stuff is important to understand, but what happened before this, that's what you've got to really get a grip on. Because when you've got a grip on this, the rest of it all kind of falls together. And you'll get to that place where, everything becomes enjoyable and effortless. And this is the conditioning. If, you're, if you've been watching these videos for a while, you know I talk about this conditioning. Because it's this conditioning that gets us into the trap in the first place. Right, from birth, this is what you've got to understand, from birth, from day one of being born, everybody on planet Earth is fighting, especially in the West, they are fighting a losing battle when it comes to alcohol. They believe from day one that alcohol is going to give them something. Right, I'm going to illustrate how this happens. So we've got to think of, you know, any way that alcohol is portrayed in our life, right? And I'm not just talking about the media or the marketing because, you know, I talk about that all the time, but let's just talk about our parents. So our parents come home after a hard day of work, right? And our parents drink alcohol. Let's just say this. So they get home after a hard day. Oh, they get home, they sit down on the couch, they open a can of beer. Then they look relaxed, right? That, that parent might have been really stressed, really agitated, really annoyed. They sit down and then they're really nice. And then they smile at you. All right, son, all right, all right, kid. How are you? Yeah, had a nice day, yeah. And all of a sudden, this parent is now really relaxed and, and well, they appear to be relaxed, right? And we see this. And then we also start to see warning signs, right? We start to see maybe at school, the teachers in, in, the, uh, in the education class, the PSHE, I, I don't know what it would be in your, in your country, but we used to have a class where we'd learn about drugs and sex education and all of these like social social, I don't know what you call it, but alcohol may have come up in that. And you might have been getting some warnings, right? Like, you know, alcohol can cause brain damage or liver damage. And you start to think, well, my dad gets home after a day of work and drinks a beer and he, he, he just looks really relaxed. So we're getting all these mixed messages from everywhere. And we're not quite sure what's going on. We're not, we're not, we're not quite sure what to, what to make of all of this. So we're now very young, very impressionable. And then our friends start drinking, right? Our friends have a party and alcohol is going to be there. And we're thinking, well, I've been having these warning signs that, you know, all these bad things can happen if I'm drinking, yet my parents drink, the people I watch on TV drink, my, all my favorite sporting heroes drink. Everybody drinks, right? Everybody drinks this poison. 
And now I'm about to make a decision and my friends are drinking. It's done, you've already lost the fight. And the thing is with alcohol, this is what you've got to realize, right? Is you take that first sip, nothing bad happens. Of course nothing bad happens because it's a gradual decline that most people don't even realize is happening. But what you've got to realize is that as soon as that person takes that first sip, all of that marketing, all of that conditioning, all of that crap, it's all done its job because you've taken the first sip of an addictive drug. You've been tricked into thinking that this addictive drug is gonna give you something. And that happened to me, right? That just didn't happen to me though. At first, I didn't quite understand all of this stuff and that's kind of why I'm explaining it to you guys, but that happened to me. And if you're watching these videos, guess what? It happened to you. Now don't get mad, don't get angry. I know, you know, it's probably a little bit strange for you to hear, but that happens to everybody. Right? If that conditioning wasn't there, nobody would ever drink alcohol. Nobody would ever touch it because it's so destructive and it's poison. You know, Nobody would fall for it. But because it's been happening since day one, you've got to realize that you've been conditioned into drinking alcohol. Right? So I just really wanted to touch on that point. And then what happens is you, know, you get to maybe your teenagers, and this may be different for, for you guys. Like This could happen in your teens. It could happen in your 30s. It could happen in your 40s. It doesn't really matter. But what happens is you have a drink and nothing bad happens. In fact, you may be with your buddies, and right in my example, it might have been like, you know, I go to a party, I have a drink, I feel a bit, I feel a bit silly, I get a bit stupid, I kiss a girl. So I'm here now, I'm in cloud nine, right? And I wake up the next morning, don't even have a hangover, nothing bad has happened. In fact, I've just had an amazing time with all my friends at this party, and everybody was like, cheers, and I was talking to people that I wouldn't have usually spoken to, and then I made out with a girl. I'm on cloud nine. Right? I'm thinking, oh my God, I have found something that really, really adds value to my life. It actually made me all confident and charismatic and all this stuff, right? So you've got the conditioning where we think that alcohol is giving us something, and then our first experience can be very good. Not always, not always, don't get me wrong, but very many times, the, those first few experiences of alcohol causes no problems, no hangovers, you might have a really great experience, and you're here, you're on cloud nine, right? And that's what happened to me. But then, you know, you start to get like, maybe you, you'll go overboard one day, you might get into a fight, you might upset a friend, you might have an argument with somebody, or you wake up really hungover. And, and these up and downs kind of happen, but there's no major problem going on. And that was my whole teenage years, and you know, some of my early 20s as well. And this kind of testing phase is where you've got no problems. And there's many people that will stay in this area for a long time. But what happened to me is in my early 20s, things started going a little bit sour. I started to realize that, you know, I wanted to drink at every single social situation. It wasn't just like the odd party now. So I'd hang out with my friends sober and then at the weekend parties I'd drink. It wasn't really like that anymore. Anytime there was a big gathering, I wanted to drink. Anytime that people were talking about going to the pub, I wanted to be there. Anything that revolved around alcohol, I wanted to be there. And this is where things kind of started getting, you know, up and down, but they never really got good again. Like, it just kind of, things would get either quite bad, I'd be a little bit depressed, a little bit sad, not feeling good about myself, or they'd get very bad, and I'd just feel like shit. And this would go up and down all the time. Sure, there were probably some good moments, I, I, I just, but I just kind of want to explain like the process. It all started good, right? Then it just got to this place where I'm like, shit. And, and, and a lot of my friends weren't like me. A lot of my friends drank normally, a lot of my friends were cool, they just like did whatever. And they just like, they still went to university, they still went to college, they still did these things, they still had jobs. I wasn't really like that. I was a lot more chaotic. I would drink and black out and I'd binge drink and there was a lot of other stuff involved. I'm not really gonna get into it too much in this video. But, you know, I probably spent a good four or five years knowing that I had a problem, but not really too bothered about fixing it, just going through the motions, sure, getting hung over, getting in trouble, falling out with people, sorry, uh, well, I just wasn't too bothered about the whole situation. But then, you know, it reached a point here, and that's where I started to realize, right, I really do have a problem, and I wanted to fix it, right? And this is kind of in my mid-twenties now. So, you know, there's my teens, there's my early twenties, this is like my mid-twenties, and I started to realize, right, shit, this, ain't, this can't continue. And I'm very lucky that I realized that early on, because, you know, a lot of people that watch these videos, you probably later on, you're probably in your, you may be in your late 20s, your late 30s, or even your late 40s. I look at the analytics, there's people 60 plus that watch these videos. I got very lucky that I realized that I had a problem early on, but that, that might not be you. So like I said, just try and ignore the ages. But the whole point of the matter is that I realized I had a problem. 
And this journey here, this was quite grueling because I didn't know how to solve it, but I was very, very open to trying anything. And, you know, it was during these times that I tried AA. And, you know, I went to AA. I went for over three months. And, you know, I did it all. I got involved. I went to the, um, the retreats and I really, you know, I really was like, right, I'm going to give this a go. But in the end, I still felt like, I'd always felt like I was missing out. I always felt like I'd given something up. And I got like these messages again and again and again that I'm powerless. If I have one drink, I'm going to drink a million. All of this stuff. And I almost found that it to be counterintuitive to what I wanted out of life. I didn't want to sit around. I didn't want to revisit the past. I didn't want to sit in meetings and complain. I didn't want to be friends with most of these people because I have nothing in common with maybe, you know, might have been one or two people that I got on with. But most of these people, I just, I didn't want to be friends with them. Not going to lie. No offense. Like, that's cool if that's you. And you go to those meetings and you enjoy the company of those people genuinely. Fair enough. That wasn't me. I didn't want to be a part of it. And, you know, I went there and boom, relapsed. And I got back into another dark place. But at this point, it, these, these now at this point, because I, was, I wanted a solution and I was willing to try things and I felt like I was being quite proactive in looking for a solution, these places actually got very, 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 like, very dark, right? Oh, my word. Can't write. Like, imagine, like, you make an effort, you go to all these meetings, you do all this stuff, and then you drink again. And it, like, you slip down pretty fast, right? You feel really, really bad. And, you know, I went through all this, and then it got to a point where, you know, this, this, this is like, I know it's like, it looks like a not a very big line, but this could have been two or three years of pissing around and just, you know, not really happy because I knew I had a problem and I'd been and I knew that I was willing, for, willing to find a solution. But anyway, and then what happened here for me is that I had like a rock bottom moment, right? And um, for those of you that watch the videos regularly, you know that I threw up blood on a MacBook Pro. And during this time, I, uh, I woke up in the morning and I was like, I can't do this anymore. I just can't keep doing this. If I keep doing this, I'm never going to do anything with my life. Like, that's how I felt. I felt extremely, extremely depressed. And I stopped drinking. I just went, boom, stopped. Willpower. Nothing. No meetings, nothing. Just pure willpower, right? Just was like, this is what I want to achieve in my life, and I'm going to do it. Boom. And this was a great time, right? This, this, this green line here was one of the best times in my life. I, I stopped drinking. I started a business for the first time in my life. I started personal training. Things were going really, really well. I was finishing my uh, last year of university, finishing a degree, had everything going for me. I had a girlfriend, I had a car, I had a nice place to live. I lived in Oxford. I was making more money than probably my university lecturers, right? Not, not boasting, I'm just saying like the contrast to all of this stuff to this, this point here where I stopped drinking with willpower was amazing, right? I had a really, really great time and I realized like there were some serious benefits to stopping drinking. And it was uh, in this... It was here at this point that I went to a party and um, yeah, I, um, I went to a party and, and there was like a voice in my head that was like, just have one drink. You can go back to moderating. Things are going so well now. And I fell for it. I fell for my own stupidity and I drank a drink. And again, it just, everything started going downhill. I lost my job in London. The personal training business, oh, sorry, I'm going to, I've skipped a bit of the story here. The personal training business just disintegrated. I broke up with my girlfriend. I moved to London and then I had to quit the job because I couldn't handle the lifestyle. I tried to start personal training again in London, couldn't hack it, had to move back to a friend's place because I had no money, I had like minus 2,000 pounds in the bank account. And it had just gone down and down and down and down and down. And I got to a goddamn dark, dark place. And uh, I woke up one morning in my bedroom when I was looking around and I'm like, I can't keep doing this. I just can't keep doing this. And I started learning, right? I started reading about alcohol. I started trying to figure out, why do I keep doing this? Why? It just makes no sense because I know I've got a problem. I know I want a solution to the problem. I know that if I stop drinking, the life of my dreams is within reach because I'd experienced it here, right? This was like a dream of mine for so long to start a business, to do these things. And when I stopped drinking, I achieved it. But why the hell did I go back down again? It just didn't make any sense. And this has been happening for my whole life. It was the one thing holding me back from achieving anything that I wanted to do. And I just couldn't understand why it kept happening to me right? Why can't I not drink alcohol? Why does everything go to shit when I drink? And that's what I wanted to figure out. And I started reading about it. I started looking into this conditioning. I started to, to try and put the pieces together to understand why I kept doing this. And this is the thing. When I did that, everything just clicked. It was, 
I don't want to sound like a, some spiritual guru, but it was like a moment of enlightenment. In my religious education class when I was in high school, that's what the teacher told me. We was asking her what is enlightenment to the RE teacher. We, you know, we'd always try and ask these hard questions for her. But she was saying that enlightenment is when you just kind of see how the world works. And I felt like this when it came to alcohol. And this is what I call reasoning from first principles, right? It's a, it's a mental model. And you break down complex problems and you realize what's going on. And that's what I got to here, right? And at this point, I had this rush. I was like, holy, I realized what is going on. I've been, I've been being tricked into drinking this drug. And, you know, I learned about the cravings and how they were created. And I learned about the conditioning and the marketing and all of this stuff. And I realized that, wait a minute, the solution to my problem is so straightforward. And I can't describe it, right? It's like, it's like, I don't know, like walking around like this and then all of a sudden you can see again. And it was amazing, right? And I had this rush and I knew that I'd beaten it. I just knew. And unlike the other times when I stopped drinking, in the past, life went round down here, right? I stopped drinking and I felt like I was giving something up. I felt like I was depriving myself. So everything started kind of going downhill. Everything started, you know, every time I'd go to a social event, I'd be like, oh, I just want to drink, you know, oh, I just have to use willpower. Oh, I just want to be like them, a normal drinker. All of this stuff, which always led me back here, right, into a place where I felt miserable. I felt like I'd given something up. And that didn't matter if I went to AA, if I did willpower. It didn't matter what I did, right? I always ended up back at this place and it just led back into the cycle again, of up and down roller coaster living. I'm not, I don't want that. I'd never want that. I don't want to go back to this cycle of just boo, boo, boo. No, thank you. And instead what I did is once I realized the truth here, once I understood alcohol exactly for what it is, which is a poison, and it has no benefits to drinking it. Once I really, really understood that, I did this. I started focusing on improving my life, right? I started focusing on building a better life for myself. And I did that from day one. And this is what I say to the members of the Sober Clear program. Don't wait around for a magical moment. You simply have to start building a better life from day one. Because the moment you've gone through this process, the moment you've gone through this system of understanding alcohol for what it is, it's done. You're already a non-drinker. You're already ready to go for it. And you know with certainty that you'll never go back to where you were before. And it just means that you can go towards a better life. So in my instance, I, I've moved to Thailand, right? I've started a, a new business, started this Sober Clear business. You know, Sober Clear, sure, is about stopping drinking, but I could have done this with anything. I could have done this with any business. I did personal training at first, then I moved to Thailand, started the online stuff. I got into another relationship. I have a motorbike, I have a house. Like, I was just like, I'm going to go for the life of my dreams and I'm going to give it the biggest shot ever, right? It's not going to be a fickle half, you know, dipping the toes in the water. I'm going for it this time and I'm going to go for it a million miles an hour. And, you know, because it's like, a, I wanted to kind of talk about the whole timeline. You know, it's, it keeps going upwards, right? It, it's not like this anymore. It's not like up and down, up and down, up and down. Like life just keeps getting better and better and better and better. And the only way that that ever happened to me is when I realized that alcohol was doing nothing for me, ever. It never had, it never will, it never did. It did nothing for me. And, you know, this kind of like, I know what it's like to be in this up and down place and, and, and to get here, it took me a lot of time, right? It took me 10 years of trial and error to try and figure this stuff out. And then when I figured it out, it all clicked. And what you can actually do is, is below this video, there's gonna be a link for you to book a consultation call and you can actually join the Sober Clear coaching program. And that's where I'll personally take you through this exact same system, right? It's fast, it's simple, it's straightforward, and it's just a simple way for you to stop drinking and you'll make it so simple, so effortless, so enjoyable. It's like a click of a finger and you're like, oh my God, I can do it. And I know it sounds a little bit hard to believe, so I'm gonna leave a link below this video where you'll be able to book a call, but there's gonna be a ton of reviews because there's tons of people that have already taken through this process. It's a proven step-by-step -step system that works and makes everything just so simple. So I advise you, yeah, if, if, if you kind of resonated with this stuff, if you understand like, you know, if this, all, if this all just made sense to you, then just click the link below this video. Just check that video out, have a watch. And yeah, guys, if you want to learn more about some of the truths to stopping drinking or some of my other experiences with alcohol, then click the videos on the screen now.